Hello and welcome to the March 2021 edition of what it's like to live with a classic mini. In this series, I go through the costs as well as the work undertaken to keep my mini running and in good order. This month, spring finally started to make an appearance and so I thought what better than to complete a mock safety or MOT on my classic mini. As someone who originally is from the UK, living in Canada, I found it different that you only need an official safety or MOT when you buy or register your car rather than annually like you do in the UK. I used the Haynes manual as a guide and went through the process of assessing whether each test was a pass, warning or fail and let's see if you agree with my conclusions. First of all, I checked the operation and effectiveness of the handbrake. So I parked my car on my drive that has a slight incline and I only required two clicks of the handbrake before the car stopped. Three clicks was a very solid stop. So this test was a pass. Next, while sitting in the driver's seat, I checked the conditions and the operation of the brake pedal. And here I went through the process of pressing the pedal to check that there was no creep and that I got a firm feel. I also checked to ensure the pedal was in good condition with no obvious leaks on the carpet. This test went well and so I assessed a pass. I examined the steering wheel. Yes, I know that's a Cooper badge and it's not correct. And I checked for any fractures, loosens off the hub and spokes and rim. I checked that the steering wheel in the column was well secured and that there was no wiggle or play in the column. Again, I've assessed it as a pass. I checked the rear view mirror. I checked that it was well secured and adjusted correctly. This was an easy pass. I checked the windscreen and the sun visors and here you can clearly see my sun visors are missing. Here I'm assessing it as a warning and I will take steps to make sure I pick up a second hand pair soon. I checked the seat belts front and back and made sure that they were not frayed or cut and that they locked as they should do and could be released even if you were pulling on them. I also made sure that they retracted correctly. All looked good, so a pass. I checked the seats to ensure that they were well fastened and that they couldn't be lifted all the way up. This was also a pass. I checked the functioning of the doors that they could be opened both from inside as well as outside. All was good and so a pass. Now looking under the car, I checked the condition of the steering rack and specifically the gaiters for any tears or rips. I also checked for interference as the wheel was turned from lock to lock. I did this with the wheels lifted off the ground. Next were some steering and suspension checks. I was looking for worn components such as tie rods, etc. Generally, everything felt tight at the hub, but you can see the left front wheel, there was definitely some play detected in the steering rack. I'm not happy with the level of play, so I assessed it as a warning, and I will order a new rack. The rear wheels looked absolutely fine. I gave all the wheels a spin, front and back, with the car lifted off the ground, checking for worn wheel bearings. All four wheels spanned fine, with no obvious sound of worn or tired bearings. Next, I went back to the suspension components, checking the condition of the dampers, for leaks, etc., but also looking for worn bushes and play in the components. All tested okay, with the exception, perhaps, of the right rear damper, where again, I felt there was a little bit too much play for my liking. So I've assessed it as a warning, and I will investigate at a later date. With the car still off the ground, I checked the condition of the drive shafts. I checked that they spun straight and that the gaiters were in good condition. Although the gaiters do have some age, generally I assess them as good enough. Next, I checked the fuel lines of the car for tightness of fit, as well as condition and looking for any leaks. Everything was bone dry with a tight fit, and so I assessed it as a pass. 
I checked the VIN plate was clearly shown and in good readable condition, which it was. And next, I got under the car to check for the condition of the exhaust. I was looking from headers to the back box, looking for holes, rust, any gaps in any of the joints or significant damage. Although there was evidence of some surface rust, generally I assessed the exhaust as being in good condition. I checked the rear brakes for leaks, and I know having taken the rear brakes apart when I bought the car less than a year ago, the pads had plenty of life left in them. I looked at the conditions of the subframe as well as the body of the car, and it's good to see that the weatherproofing I applied before the winter is doing a fine job of preventing any rust. All look great, and so a good pass. Next, I moved on to the electrics. I checked with the car ignition on, and also when it was running, the performance of the indicators, the lights, both main and full beams, the hazard lights, the rear running lights, as well as brake lights and reverse lights. You'll see I also had a little helper who asked to check the condition of the horn. Push it in. <coughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Do it again. <coughs> he also checked the interior lights. All performed great, so a good pass. Last was a check of the engine, and following the Haynes manual, I held the car at 2,500 revs for a period of time, then took my feet off the gas and checked for smoke. It was good to see there was none coming from the exhaust, so that was another pass. All in all, I was pleased with the results of the mock MOT, I think generally it would have performed absolutely fine. There are a few areas of the car that I need to take a bit of a closer look at and no doubt we'll be replacing some parts. Next, looking at the numbers. I have a new dashboard this month, which may be familiar to you. Looking at the first measure, the fuel efficiency, you can see that I haven't traveled very many miles this month at about 30 miles and at an MPG of around 20 miles per gallon. I have a theory that by doing more miles, my MPG will increase. So I need to use the car more. Looking at the spend, you can see I did spend more than last month, although at only $35 or £22, not exactly a huge amount of spend this month. And the spend this month is lower than the long-term monthly average of $56 or £35. Pretty much the only thing I spent money on this month really was some more tools. I bought some Allen key sets and locking ply sets, and they were a great deal at Canadian Tire and I can't walk away from a bargain when it comes to tools. I did take four readings with the Sykes Pickerfant tool and nothing really to write home about too much with the readings, albeit that the revs are still a little bit higher than I would like them to be. Generally, I'm happy with the readings I got. As a little something extra this month, I tried to make sure that I work in an efficient manner. So I decided I needed to create a power tool storage unit so that I could organize my tools a little bit better. Stay safe. See you next time.